Are you a current sophomore or younger who might be taking the digital SAT? Or are you a junior internationally wondering how in the world are you supposed to study for a test that literally has zero practice tests available for it? Cool. In this video, no matter who you are, whether you're a student or whether you're a teacher, a counselor, a parent, I'm going to share with you the latest insider scoop on the digital SAT. I recently attended a conference where I heard a presentation from a college board representative and I also personally asked her a couple of questions on the new digital SAT and I'm going to share with you some of the information that they've released now on the new exam that was not available when we published another video back in January and is not necessarily in all of the press releases available on their website as of yet. So exciting dirt. Stay tuned. My name's Brooke. I've been coaching the SAT and the ACT for over a decade and a half. I've coached students to perfect scores on the latest version of the SAT. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel and check out our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe, because as the College Board drops more information, I'm gonna be first to make sure you know about it. We also have a couple of online courses for the SAT and the ACT if you're looking to up your game and get awesome scores. But finally, if you're looking for private tutoring or college essay coaching, you can also find that at supertutortv.com slash tutoring. You can work with me or one of our amazing and wonderful staff tutors. And we have a new college essay coaching class this summer in 2022. And we have an ACT cram course coming up the week of the ACT. So if you're taking tests now, be sure to check those out as well. I'm going to do a quick recap before I get into this, just to remind you guys of some of the details of the test. In March 2023, the test will roll out internationally. In fall of 2023, the PSAT will be the new digital platform. And by the way, it will be the same length as the SAT. And in the United States in March 2024, Everywhere will be the digital SAT. They're doing a full rollout. In terms of what it's testing, it's testing basically the same content and it's trying to stay the same as much as possible, but there are some differences in content that I recently heard about. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some of those and some of them are even new from what I had heard before. You're gonna be allowed to use scratch paper and there will be no separate reading and writing scores, though it will be on the same score scale. So it's still gonna be out of 800 for reading and writing and out of 800 for math. And added together, it will still be a 1600 test. So the scoring is basically staying the same. They're not gonna have as much detail and such in terms of the breakdowns. It's harder to do that with an adaptive test to go in and say, oh, this is how many history questions in reading that you missed, and this is how many of this that you missed, and did all these like subsection kind of scores. Study materials and information. So this was one of the biggest areas that people had questions on. First update is that they're going to be releasing an official update in a few weeks that's going to give us more insights on what is actually on this test and how it's going to work. In that update, my understanding is that there will be a few select sample items so you can see what the questions are going to look like. They're also going to get into how the test is designed. So that should be interesting to have a little bit more information on what exactly is going to be expected of you and what's on the test. The second thing, big question that I feel like everybody has is when are the practice tests going to hit? When are we going to get some practice materials? And this is really good news. Previously, the College Board had said it was going to be in fall of 2022, but they didn't say when in fall of 2022. And though they're not promising anything, word on the street is, is that these materials may drop as soon as late summer of 2022, which is great news for all you international students out there. Next, how many online practice tests will be released this fall or early summer? And it looks like four will be released. That's kind of the number. And I don't think they knew that number before. So it's great news for international students that you're going to have at least four tests to practice with. And additionally, one other announcement is that they will also have problem sets that are going to be releasing this fall, probably by early fall, maybe even late summer. And those practice sets are going to be in addition to the four practice full tests. So you'll have four practice tests you can take and then also question banks where you can practice your skills and practice on individual questions. So it's good news that there will be a little bit of additional material to practice with. The other thing that they mentioned, which was sort of new news to me, is that Khan is redeveloping the SAT materials for the new test and they will be using some of the old material in the new material, but they're doing an audit right now to figure out what overlaps, what's basically the same, what they can reuse, and what needs sort of an update given the circumstances in the new exam. So they're gonna be adding some pieces to it, retaining some of it, but basically launching that on a new page and platform. And that brings me to the next point, which is that both the 
SAT prep for the current test and SAT prep for the digital exam are going to coexist on Khan Academy at the same time through sort of two different sites. And they're going to try to make sure that students get to the correct site so they're not practicing on the wrong site with the wrong material. Next up and finally on the content end, they have said that there is going to be content released annually after these four test drops. So we're dropping four tests this year. And then every year they're going to add to that mix from the material that has been exhausted through the testing process throughout the year. One question that I personally asked was about the QAS. As some of you know, I've done a video on truth and testing laws and how that's gonna play out with the SAT. And if you're not familiar with it, there are laws essentially in California and New York that say you have to release a test if you give it to people. And it's a standardized test and it counts for college. You have to show people the test they took. And the way that the College Board did that in the past is something called the QAS. It's kind of like the golden ticket of practice materials right now on the market. You can get on Reddit and learn all about it or watch my video. So I'm not going to get too much into what the QAS is and what truth and testing laws are, but basically the announcement is they don't know what they're doing about truth and testing laws yet, so they don't know how they're going to negotiate or work around the particular laws that exist in California and New York, but they're working on it. Next point is about how can you, can you take this exam. As they mentioned before, you can use your own laptop or your own tablet. You can also use a managed Chromebook. And what's new is they've announced that you can also use certain peripherals. If you are bringing a tablet, you are allowed to use a keyboard that goes with that tablet, as well as a stylus or a pen, which is new information. I don't know if there's going to be restrictions or parameters on those styluses or pens, but you are, as of now, they're planning to allow you to use them. Likewise, before, they weren't necessarily allowing you to to use a mouse with a laptop, but because I know some students have like broken trackpads and things, they said that they did realize that that was an accommodation that was probably necessary, though I don't know if there's going to be limitations on the mouse or how that will work, but that's their plan at this point. Next, connection issues and testing. This was kind of a big question that some people had. One of the features that they've built into the exam is the ability for your computer to basically cache the entire test so that while you're taking it, if there are interruptions in Wi-Fi, you can continue taking the test and it won't interrupt your test taking. All you have to do is get back online within a certain amount of time after you've completed the test to upload your results. During their pilots, about 12% of students ended up losing connection in the middle of their tests, but only 1% knew about it or were aware of it, and zero students were unable to submit their result. So that's really good news. Next thing that they announced is that there's going to be more flexibility on start times and they give a little bit more clarity into what that might entail. For example, schools can give the test throughout the day at different times during the day to different students. They can also give the test across a whole window of time at a single school. So schools don't have to give the SAT in school just on one Wednesday for everyone at their school. So that's good news for school districts that are a little bit nervous about the technical aspect of this rollout. Paper accommodations. Another question that came up is, will there be accommodations for students who need to take the exam on paper? And the answer was yes, but that paper exam will not be adaptive. It will be a linear, longer test. So if you're getting accommodations to take the test on paper, chances are it's going to resemble what the SAT looks like right now more than what the adaptive test looks like. Finally, they announced some online tools that I didn't know about before. For instance, their highlighter will have different colors on the highlighter. You will also be able to underline and strike out in the passage. The person we spoke with wasn't 100% sure of the functionality on answer choices in terms of underlining or highlighting or what would be available, if anything, and there is total strikeout. So we'll have to wait and see on the announcement. And they're also going to be releasing the platform, like a little mini demo of the platform at some point, probably this summer. So that will give us more information there. Features, let's talk about some features. Students are going to be on different timing windows. So breaks are going to happen at different times. And that means that while you're trying to focus on your test, there could be people getting up from their break, people coming back from their break. And so that's something to be aware of for this test. If you're the kind of person that gets distracted really easily, you might take that into consideration when you're choosing SAT or ACT. They also announced an exploration tool for careers that's going to loop into the PSAT. So if you take a PSAT and you get your score back, when you look at your score report, they're going to offer you access to a career exploration tool that's going to take into account how you did on reading and writing versus math, what kind of things you were good at if you were good at geometry, for example. Maybe that would tie into careers that could utilize that kind of a visual thinking math skill, things like that. Next, content. Let's talk about content a little bit. 
reading section is going to have one passage per question. Previous documentation that the College Board had released had said that there will be one or two questions per passage. Our rep has confirmed that it will be one question per passage. So we're going to lose those two-part evidence questions that I know you all know and love on the reading section. Fun, fun, fun. You are going to get more time per question, so that's another update. And they also have said that the majority of people in the pilot end up with extra time at the end of their tests, and they say that they feel relaxed. And that's kind of the report back, is that students do not feel overly rushed with this particular exam. The other content thing that I thought was really interesting is in the math section. There was a hint that there will be more geometry in terms of proportion than there was on the old exam, which to me makes sense if it's adaptive. You got to fit, you got to test all these areas and you only have so much time. So a greater percentage of those would likely be geometry. Another content update is that the reading portion of the SAT is changing what kind of documents they're pulling from a little bit in the sense that our rep shared with us that it will no longer be a requirement of a certain percentage of the documents that the reading section is pulling from be what they call founding documents, where you get these primary sources. And what I mean by primary source is it's written by the person who lived in that time period, right? So if it's about Alexander Hamilton, it's Alexander Hamilton's speech, right? So it's official founding documents, whether it's the United States or it's, you know, something about South African liberty. So that could change the nature of the kind of passages that we see on the SAT. I think that will be a welcome change to many students who find those passages really boring or difficult. And now finally, one last piece of information that we gleaned is that previously on the SAT to test experimental questions, the College Board added a fifth section. Technically, they're allowed to put real questions in the fifth section and then experimental questions in the other sections, though it's supposed to probably be in the fifth section, but that's how they create experimental items on the current version of the SAT. On the new SAT, the experimental items will be worked in to your actual section. So for instance, on the reading section, there will be approximately 40 passages and 40 questions. And within those 40 passages and 40 questions, there will be two to four questions that are experimental questions and the rest will be operational or count toward your score. This is great news because it also means that your practice on Khan Academy is going to be the same length of time as the actual test. So if there's 40 passages and items on the actual test in the reading and writing section, there will be 40 on the Khan Academy practice test and two or four of those will be experimental and the rest will be operational. And that's how they're planning to make this happen. That's all the updates that I've got for now. I hope you guys found all of this information insightful. If so, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. And I'm gonna be doing videos on how to ace this test soon, on how to approach it, on how to study for it, on what resources are out there. So make sure you stay tuned to us at SuperTutor TV. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And subscribe to our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. Thanks again for watching you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.